Hello there folks, uh, back again for another video. Uh, in this one, we're going to be continuing our and back again kind of series. We've looked at the Fellowship of the Rings, the book that started it all. And then we moved on through to the Two Towers and we had a look at that to see what uh, what had changed and what had been added with the addition of the Rohirrim and the Urukai to kind of bring it in line with the Two Towers movie. And then we have a book that I had never had in my possession. And so I reached out onto the Ebays to see if I could find a copy. And lo and behold, I could for about a fiver, I think it was. Um, I have seen a copy of this in a charity shop for about £25. So I think that I got a pretty good deal of that in that regard. But uh, yeah, I've never really looked through this book. Um, so it'll be really interesting to kind of dive in and have a look at it and uh, and see what it's all about. One thing I really like, actually, is the is this stuff on the back. So this terrain, I love how similar this looks to the actual terrain that we've got now. Uh, the new plastic terrain that's been coming through Games Workshop. I think it looks absolutely stunning. Um, but yeah, very cool. I'm sure we'll see some more stuff about terrain building and things in here. So yes, be gone for two other movie books. Let's have a look at this one and see what's inside. So... A lot of the similar stuff that we've got before, so, oh, this is kind of cool. So we've got uh, Sam and uh, Frodo climbing the stairs of Kilith Ungol as Gollum waits in the corner. And then we have um, Tom Bombadil and Goldberry dealing with the Barrow Whites as they've captured the, uh, the Hobbits. So what's quite interesting immediately from this is that it looks like they're finishing off kind of what was done with the movies, but also branching out beyond that, which I think is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, let's dive in and have a look at it. I think a lot of it's going to be more or less the same, isn't it, really, in terms of content and stuff. So, a little introduction to the battle game. The map is still there. Immediately getting a nice showcase, which I think is kind of cool. Showing off uh, what people have been doing with the hobby and, and all that kind of stuff. So, building Balin's tomb. Painting up an awesome illuminated Balrog. Getting all those additional goblins in that are still in the game, which is kind of cool. And a big uh, battle underneath the mountain between Durin's folk and the goblins of Moria. So yeah, similar to what we'd seen in previous um, versions of the book, we have themed um, artwork and, and photography, which kind of matches up with what we've got here. So... Um, the Men of Minas Tirith versus the Orcs of Mordor, um, and some still, so still some really nice kits actually for both of those, which I probably have shown off in some hobby videos where I've been painting up the Men of Minas Tirith and all that kind of good stuff as well. But, uh, but yeah, so and a nice little breakdown of the different uh, models and stuff. And maybe if this for the is this the first time we're actually starting to see these characters being separated out? Although in essence they're more or less the same. Although this guy doesn't have a shooting value there which is interesting but there we go because he doesn't have, his, doesn't have a weapon yeah so a breakdown of movement as per usual additional bits on terrain it feels like there's a little bit more photography perhaps in this uh which is quite interesting um compared to previous books but i, I, I would have to go through and compare the pictures <laughs> one by one in order to work that out i suppose but uh, yeah the orcs preparing for an assault on Oskilia there. Everything's more or less the same when we were coming through here. A lot of similar stuff. Nice photography though, as always. Man, the men of the men of Ministry are actually pretty badass. Now this was cool coming through and seeing this. So here we can see the Barlin, the old Barlin model, the old metal Barlin. Um, who represents old Barlin as well, I suppose, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then you've got some of the Khazad Guard and the old metal uh, dwarf warriors, because they hadn't come out with the plastic kits for them yet, going up against the Moria Goblins, the plastic kits, and then the big metal troll and stuff, rather than that being a Minas Tirith fight, which I think is kind of cool. But then obviously the men of Minas Tirith and all the new models, it's like the Heroes of the West models, have been used for all of the photography going through the book. You can see more of it there as well. So yeah, lots of interesting things there for people to dive into 
um, rules wise and stuff I'm sure they did a few clarifications and extra bits and pieces so if you are aware of anything that was changed between versions of these books then please let me know in the comments down below I, I, I don't have the willpower to dive too deep into all of that but uh, yeah there's the charge of the Rohirrim and there's already a scenario as well being thrown into the mix which is kind of cool so we've got a first scenario the ambush um, so this is kind of like a learning scenario which is kind of cool so maybe if you picked up the uh, the starter box, you could play with some of the orcs that you got. So this is three warriors of Minas Tirith, two with shields and one with bow, against four mortar orcs, three with shields and one with a bow. So this has been set up as a small, very, very small little way to get started in the game, which I think is really nice, actually, to see that started out. I absolutely loved this artwork, by the way. The, I can't remember who the artist is who did this. But the actual pencil line sketches for Middle Earth and the strategy battle game are absolutely glorious. And I would love to see an art book done just using these. I think that would be amazing. You see some more of it towards the beginning, actually, with the, the dwarves. Let's see if I can get to it. Eh, eh, there we go. See some of the dwarf warriors battling against the Moria goblins. Or Mariah Goblins, however you want, you want me to say it. There's that Glorfindel model, which was um, in use until fairly recently. Same with Elrond. We had this really nice scene that I think has inspired a lot of people to try and do kind of like a, uh, a children of uh, uh, Elrond warband, where you have Eladan and Elra here, shown there at the top. Two of my favourite models, alongside uh, Glorfindel. And Arwen there in the corner as well. So you can have all of the children of, El of Elrond and his faithful companion going up against uh, the uh, the forces of, of goblins and orcs and all sorts of different things. And there's some really nice additional photography here showing off scenery and all that kind of stuff that people have been building. So a really nice little conversion there for Galadriel and her mirror. And then Arwen riding forth on Asphaloth. Some more special rules and stuff thrown into the mix. All your heroic actions and all that kind of good stuff. Gandalf calling the men to fight. Whatever comes through those gates, you will hold your ground. And again, nice bits and pieces there. Breaking down all the different weapons and how all that works. And throwing up by throwing weapons and that kind of good stuff as well. Banners. More lovely artwork. So yes, some more for the the dwarves. Baruch Kazad, Kazad Aymanu, axes of the dwarves. The dwarves are upon you. Some really cool stuff there with the dwarf kings leading some of the dwarf warriors into battle alongside Balin there. And again, more of that beautiful artwork. And uh, Gimli uh, as one of the three hunters charging his way through the ranks of the Urukai at uh, Helm's Deep, no doubt. Baal in there, leading his kinsfolk into battle. Some more dwarven artwork. And Gimli resting on the field of battle. Without any salted pork, though, unfortunately. And some more dwarves in the background as well. So this is the first time they were... You know how in the new modern books we have the showcases? This kind of does that, really, which I think is kind of nice. And also this is this way to build up your forces and build armies and things, which is kind of cool. Uh, and there's even, like, a... I think there's a... Ross, force roster somewhere at the back. Uh, we'll see if we can find it later. Um, which has been designed for that. Um, had they decided how they'd done the uh, heroes and warbands yet? I don't suppose they had actually, which is kind of interesting. Uh, which is cool. So yeah, take your heroes and take your take your warriors and everything like that. And then we have all the profiles again done to match the. Uh, the era of the Return of the King, so you've got Frodo Baggins there, Sam Gamgee, Meriadoc, and Peregrine done up in their classic metal models for the Return of the King. Gandalf, still with this lovely grey version of him. And then the Heroes of the West versions of Gimli and Legolas, and I believe got a really awesome model for Ar Aragorn. Um, and I know that a lot of people have taken that version of Aragorn and turned it into a whole host of... Um, Special miniatures and all sorts of different things for him, which is kind of neat. Um, so yeah, very cool. Boromir's still there, which is nice. Elrond, 
Arwen, Gilgalad. So this was collecting together everything that had come before. Still got that awesome Elven Captain. Third in Aomer, Eowyn. Captain of Men. Was this still done to represent both? Yes, still done to represent both Rohan and Gondor. So they were separate at that point. Elendil, Isildur, Faramir, Gamling. Still love Gamling. And Damrod there as well. And Gandalf the White. The Great Wizard. Finally seeing the really awesome miniature for Treebeard in action there as well, stomping forward. I still really like that old metal model, but I think the plastic one is 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 gorgeous. No photography for some of these. So you've got the King of the Dead, Denethor and Gwaihir, and then your warriors. So a whole host of good stuff in there for people to pick up and play around with. I still think that... Let me see if I can get back to that page. Here we go. This model for Rohan... So that is a one of the normal warrior models that you get in the in the set. I think that is like a proper awesome hero miniature for you to convert. Like if you can't get your hand on like an Urken brand or something, I think this would be a really good way to represent Urken brand because um, I just think it's like the most heroic of the of the uh, poses. Pardon me in the uh, in the set. And it looks gorgeous. So if you, can, if you can find an appropriate mounted version that matches him in terms of epicness, away you go, I say. But yeah, so lots of stuff there. The Guard of the Fountain Court, the Knights of the Minas Stilith, the Army of the Dead. Another showcase. Oh man, that Radagast artwork. And that old model for Radagast is just beautiful. I, I just really love it. I think it's really nice. And I and I had that in my collection. It's uh, It's absolutely beautiful. More spellcasters, so you've got Saruman being shown off there as well. And the Fortress of Darkness, so you start to see things like the big fell beasts, the Dark Lord Sauron, the Ringwraiths, having two pages worth of uh, rules to get stuck into. Saruman gets a whole page to himself, the Balrog. And then all of your awesome evil figures, the Orc Captain, still a really nice model. I got the one without the helmet on, but I, I think it's beautiful. And I use that as my kind of leader of my orcs. Named characters there for Grishnak. Still a really nice model. Gollum. I was going to so nothing had been broken down into um, kingdoms or factions yet. So you could kind of mix and match anything you wanted, really, which I think was kind of nice. Um uh, and your evil warriors, so your Rukai berserkers, your warriors, your goblins, your orcs that got their plastic kit, cave trolls, Mordor trolls. So they were basically planning out everything that was going to be coming out over the next little while. A little look at Arnor. I mean, look at that amazing illustration for um, the uh, Barrow White. Maybe this was Blanche, actually. Maybe it was. I'd have to have a look at that, actually, because I can't really remember. Um, but yeah, gorgeous stuff there for Arnor and the further reaches of what they were planning to do. And then a bunch of scenarios. Um, so you had a skirmish in Osgiliath, which obviously mirrors the films quite nicely. And some rear guard actions. So even more stuff to do with Osgiliath and sort of following the, the lines of the film. And then you had uh, Frodo, Sam and Shelob um, battling it out. Uh, a ride towards the um the ruins of uh of Osgiliath with your uh with Faramir and Co. Um and a slightly awkward end as it were, but uh, there we go. Um riding riding away. Riding forward I suppose actually. And then the White Raider riding out to save them. A battle inside Minas Tirith and uh the charge of the Rohirrim being played out there on a big thing. The Fate of Thet. So they broke down a lot of stuff individually, which I think is quite nice. So you could play out smaller games with smaller amounts of models rather than having to play out the entire thing. But there you go. There's the entire of the Battle of the Pelennor Fields <laughs> lined up for you there, really. Um, some interesting looks at some of the forces you get. The Tower of Kirith Ungol. Um, so a little bit of an interesting one there with uh, Sam having to battle his way through all the fighting before you get to the top. And the evil model wants Frodo's mithril coat, as it were. And Sam and Frodo want to try and get off the other side, which is quite nice. 
and some more stuff there, which is quite nice for playing out both the Path of the Hobbits and also the Black Gate opening at the same time. So that's kind of cool. I like that they did that so you play the game side by side. Ooh, that's fun. That's a nice little circumstance. That's a nice little way to dive in. I look at the Last Alliance, that big Sauron model, and the forces of the Orcs and the Elves fighting it out there, and the men of Numenor. Now this, when I saw this, I was very excited. So this is exploring the other battles that weren't shown in the films and everything else that was happening at the same time and the ways that you could play it out across uh, a campaign perhaps as well. So you've got additional rules here for a bunch of the other characters that you might need for these scenarios. So you've got um, your dwarves, additional stuff there for, for all that kind of stuff. And then you have these really awesome scenarios. This one is one with Eskaroth and the Doors of Erebor. <coughs> and uh, having to deal with an ambush in the night by a band of uh, orcs that have been sent down from the mountains. And some uruks and stuff. Oh, is it uruks in this one? Ah, oh, it is uruks. That's kind of cool. But they're Mordor uruks, I would I would suppose. Yeah, especially from the the look of their their garb. They are Mordor uruks. Um, so yeah, you've got this one again, which is another dwarven one. Uh, so this is the dwarves fighting back uh, as they sort of uh, alongside. Some wood elves, which is kind of nice. Um, and you've got Morun being drawn into the mix. I think this is before we had Morun and Dra, though. Um, which we got uh, in uh, in later books. And you've got this Baruch Khazad. So this is where the uh, dwarves... So you've got Day and Iron, in fact, Radagast the Brown. And a bunch of others fighting against uh, more orcs surrounding their position. Once more. Oh no, sorry. No, you're attacking back. So you've got the dwarves playing on either side and attacking back against the orcs that are in the middle. That's kind of cool. And having Radagast on your side, I think, is pretty nice to see. Because you don't tend to see a lot more of him, which is cool. And some nice special rules there as well. Looking at things like Cowardly and the fact that uh, the dwarves are angered. And uh, the sun's coming up and stuff, which is quite nice. Dane's last stand. So fighting out uh, the battle uh, before the gates of Erebor. Um, which I think is kind of cool. And you've got Kings of Men to represent Brand. Obviously, I think this was redone in uh, the War in the North supplement and that kind of thing, because we've got new models for all of those. But it's nice to see that even back then they were thinking about how they'd play out additional scenarios and stuff. The Assault on Lothlorien, which includes uh, Galadriel, Celeborn, and a bunch of elves against a huge amount of uh, evil orcs and goblins and stuff. And Urukai. Charging forth. So yeah, a really nice little section of the book, that one, with some additional scenarios that maybe you hadn't seen in the films, but it would be a really nice way for you to dive in and start learning about the books and the additional stories that were being told and looking through the appendices and what that explained about everything else that was happening uh, in Middle-earth while the War of the Ring was being fought to... Uh, by Gondor and Rohan and stuff. And then you have a breakdown of painting and miniatures and all the kind of good stuff that we've seen previous to this. Look at washes and how they were used and working on different characters and things. So it was a very nice breakdown of how to do a lot of the different things that you'd need to bring your armies to life. And the models were gorgeous anyway, so you had some nice guides um, for playing around with things. So another little bit of fun bit on uh, kit bashing and reposing. And then Gandalf leading the forces of Minas Tirith and Rohan against their foes. Even more stuff on assembling multi-part miniatures and doing pinning. Making banners and flags. And then some more stuff on terrain. There's some easy bits and pieces and then some slightly harder bits. So there's some interesting what's this. So using foam card and cutting out your ruined sections of walls to make little kind of tumble down houses and stuff which would be great for Osgiliath and beyond Minas Tirith itself <laughs> it's kind of cool Rohan and the houses of Rohan yeah just build Helm's Deep <laughs> draw two circles then finish and build the entire Helm's Deep and some more on the gaming hobby as well which is kind of nice ah and actually some interesting rules for how to run tournaments 
So players will enter the tournament with two forces, one good, one evil. I really like that kind of thing. A thousand points divided between both of their forces. And then which one they want to allocate to each, to each, which is kind of cool. Uh, include a maximum of 50 models. Must include a hero to lead it into battle. There is no limit on the points that can be spent on heroes. But no more of a third can be done on bows, which is kind of nice. Um, cannot include Tom Bobbin and Goldberry. Uh, can only have named heroes once. And you will always use the most up-to-date version of it. And then you play through a particular set of different scenarios, which I think is quite nice. Oh, that's really cool. I really like that. Um, when a rider is killed, the mount is always removed. Scene will be set up in advance. You must assume everyone is carrying their default war gear and all that kind of good stuff as well. So this was a good, fun way for you to dive in and actually be like, ah, right, we actually want to play proper big battles with tournament lists now, which I think is quite nice. And then there's that big blue box set. With the one of the box sets from the past, the past that I didn't get. And all the new, so that is the Heroes of the West set there, which was cool. The Warriors of Minas Tirith and the Orcs of Mordor. Still with the old website as well, back then. Uh, yeah, and then some fun looks of what was coming up down the line. So some really nice little models there, still being sculpted by a great team, the Perrys and, and whatnot. So yeah, there's your record sheet for building your... Uh, your armies, and your sort of broken down charts and all that kind of good stuff as well, which is really cool. So yeah, I'd say a really good way for them to have essentially, as it was back then, finished off what they were doing for the Lord of the Rings and kind of bringing it to a close, Before I think before we got the big blue book, essentially, really. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love the, the additional scenarios that they put into the, the back of this for the long night and stuff. I think this is really cool. Um, and it was nice that they were kind of being like, look, we're not going to abandon the game just after the movies are finished. We're going to keep building on this and throwing more stuff into the mix. And that came through in the uh, White Dwarf articles and things that we got. And we're still, well, more or less still getting, I suppose, uh, up until this point. So yeah, really nice stuff uh, in this book. And it was really fun to look back through something that I never got to pick up as a kid. Um, because, yeah, I kind of fell out of the uh, the hobby at this point, at least the Middle-earth hobby anyway. Uh, but it was nice to look back through this and see what they did and have those extra scenarios in there. And this is kind of like a nice little time capsule of what it was like back then. Um, I'm not entirely sure that I'll go through things like the Big Blue Book and all that kind of stuff and the Hobbit things and, and, and all that. She just was. But, uh, yeah, really fun little uh, book to kind of cap things off and finish our little journey as we went there and back again. Uh, through uh, history and uh, yeah stunning I still wish this one had been green if this had been green that would have been amazing <laughs> to finish things off but yeah tell me what you think about the Return of the King book and when it came out were you playing the game at the time did you start playing when this box set came out what memories do you have of the Return of the King and playing games did you dive into tournament play and all that kind of that good stuff um, make sure to comment share like do all that good stuff down below and uh, there's also a Kofi link down there so if you enjoy what I do and you want to buy me a cup of tea, you can do via a donation link there, which is quite kind of nice. But yeah, you don't have to do that. Uh, the most important thing is diving into those comments and uh, sharing your thoughts with me about what you think of the game that we all love, because uh, I love diving into those comments and, and having a chat with you folks. Um, if you didn't see the video that I put out midweek, I did one on a Chroma, which is a card game. Won't necessarily be for everybody, but if you are interested in learning a little bit more about a, a new card game that I picked up, make sure to go and check out, out that. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to be looking at uh, filming some stuff about um, finishing off the Battle of Osgiliath set and talking through some processes and hobby and all that kind of things at the hobby table. So, uh, yeah, that should be good fun for our next video. But yes, awesome stuff. Um, make sure to drop your comments down below and I'll speak to folks very, very soon. Bye.